Hey, this is Matt Woodman from Bread Precision. Freshly back from sunny California. It was actually a bit colder than I was expecting it to be. And Niagara Summit 2024. I just wanted to throw together a quick little recap video of some of the major points, um, the major announcements that were made there, and uh, some of the cool product that we saw that we haven't seen before um, from one of our vendors in particular. Um, there was a lot to see there and we had a booth, um, unlike previous years where we didn't. So this was the first event that we've, we've had a booth at. So it's kind of hard to break out of the booth, uh, talking to people and stuff like that and seeing everything on the show floor. So if we miss something, um, this isn't an all encompassing, uh, recap, uh, but you will be seeing more details out of a lot of the um, things that I'm going to cover here. So let's jump in and take a look. All right. So recap. First off, news from Tritium. Niagara 5 has been announced. Uh, they're targeting 2025 for its release. Not really much in the way of details as to what that's going to uh, encompass, what's going to be included in Niagara 5. But obviously... It's a major point release, or not a point release, excuse me. It's a major release, so I would um, expect big things out of it. Um, we actually talked to a few of the developers um, who came over to our booth, uh, and they were just looking for feedback on some pain points and things on, on UI and user experience stuff. So uh, Honeywell and Tritium are definitely uh, going hard with this release, and... Um, I'm expecting big things out of it. Next up, uh, we've got Niagara 414. That is slated for Q3 of this year. It's in early access now. We are actually playing with it already. Um, so the big things out of that are Google Auth, which allows you to do um, two-factor, so time-based one-time passwords um, directly from your JSON or your supervisor. Um, super easy to set up. I really like that feature. Uh, certificate signer service, which allows you to rotate certificates at uh, JSES underneath a supervisor and have that supervisor and its CA automatically sign those certificates for you and install them and use them down at the JSES. And that's a nice feature as well. Um, we'll have details on these in the future. And then they're also building out uh, their HTML5 use even more uh, slowly trying to go through everything that hasn't been covered yet uh, in previous releases. And then after that, they also announced that uh, Niagara 4.15 is coming first quarter of 2025. This is going to be a long-term stability release, um, or excuse me, a long-term support release, which means that uh, you get at least three years of support out of it, um, and it's going to be the last release that supports the Jace 8000. Um the big feature that is going to come with this, and this was a this was a new announcement I wasn't aware of previously, is that it's going to take I think which is the last major missing HTML5 view because it's the most complicated of all of the uh, the views in Niagara, and that's the HTML5 uh, PX editor. So they're going to build out the PX editor in HTML5, and you'll be able to use it directly in a web browser to uh, modify graphics and things, so that you don't have to open up your workbench in order to do it. And then another thing that they hammered on a bunch in the keynote sessions is the Niagara Cloud. I think they're going to be making a big push with the Niagara Cloud and the cloud services that they offer. Um, so you'll see more from us in terms of coverage on uh, the stuff that's already out there. So Niagara Recover and Niagara Remote. Remote. Um, so look out for those in the new future as well. We have some basic videos on it, but I want to get a little bit more technical in the installation and usage of those uh, services here uh, in the near future. Next up, new from others. Um, I think Phoenix Contact was really of our vendors, um, the only one that had a bunch of product that I hadn't seen before. Um, and these are products that apparently are already available in Europe. But because of UL uh, certification, they will not be available in the U.S. until uh, the latter half of this year or potentially next year for the 20, uh, 2250 BI. Um, that'll be 2025. So first up, uh, Phoenix Contact has a new Niagara controller coming. It's the Catan. It has a three-port managed switch. 
14 points of configurable I.O. It uses a uh, single pair Ethernet, so T1L, for its the expansion modules for the communication of those. Um, and I hear tell that potentially that could be used for communication uh, completely uh, in the future uh, to the controller itself so that you wouldn't have to use a normal you know, Ethernet to do that. And then one of the really cool features is that it has a USB-C touchscreen that you can add in. Um, and this could, you know, you could buy the controller without it. And then if you want to have that um, ability to override your I.O. and uh, that kind of thing, you can purchase that uh, touchscreen and just pop it on the front, take off that, uh, take off that cover, and it just connects right here to that USB-C. It is nice because it is USB-C. You could get a USB-C extension cable, and that's how they were showing it actually in their booth with an extension cable connected into the port on the controller or the I.O. and bring it out uh, maybe to the front of a panel or something like that. You, you could definitely do that. They also announced that they're updating their uh, their ILC, uh, so they're what was basically their JACE controller previously. So they're updating the specs inside it to basically be equivalent to the Jace 9000. That'll be available in 2025. And then one of the other nice little uh, features of this as well is that they're, they're also moving to USB-C. So USB-C, everything. I like it. And then the last piece on here is this FL Switch 1108 REG, which is this switch here. It's a four-port switch. They also make one that has four ports of... Uh, power over ethernet four of those ports excuse me that would support power over ethernet um and you may be noticing a theme here with some of the stuff that they're showing uh that they were showing at the booth there is a din standard in europe for uh sort of form factor uh they do a lot of touch protection actually in their panels so the way that these uh devices typically would work in a european panel is that you would have touch protection covering all of your wires and, and connection points, and only the tops of these controllers would stick out uh, and be accessible easily um, without removing that touch protection. And, and that's why you're seeing these uh, form factors specifically. And you'll notice other vendors are doing the, the same thing because of that. So that is the new stuff from Phoenix Contact. Again, this isn't all-encompassing. Uh, I did see some vendors that we... Uh, we don't offer at the moment that were interesting and we're going to be investigating here uh, soon, uh, but don't want to mention those depending on how things pan out with them. So, um, but definitely keep in mind that, you know, there could be new other products coming in the near future from us, from new vendors that we may not, might not carry right now. And another big piece of this particular summit was that we had a booth for the first time um, and that's where I spent most of my time actually, aside from going to a few of the, um, panel discussions and things, the breakouts, I was in the booth most of the time. So I appreciate everyone who came out and said hi and, uh, mentioned how much they enjoy the videos and things. I really appreciate that. And, uh, so yeah, one of the things that we were showing off in the booth was a little project that I put together specifically for the booth, which was this Vesta board which was communicating through a Jace and uh, displaying some points from a TR-50 uh, indoor air quality sensor. Um, and if you're not familiar with the Vesta board, if I uh, play this, you can see it. it it's a little board that flips through some uh, characters and things to show you values, kind of like something you'd see in an old trade, train station. So this is just API control directly from Niagara using the HTTP client driver and the JSON toolkit. I'll have more details uh, in a technical deep dive breakdown of how I did this uh, here in the next week or so probably. So keep an eye out for that. But thank you to everyone who stopped by the booth and uh, was chatting with us and uh, maybe you want something too. So that, uh, that sort of covers everything that uh, I saw and got out of Niagara Summit. Um, again, there was a lot going on. A lot of uh, people came up and said hi and uh, mentioned that they enjoy the videos. I really appreciate that. Um, as always, if you have any uh, suggestions for things you'd like to see covered, you can leave them down in the comments below. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.